Hello guys, I am Senior Huntington, your accounting tutor. I welcome you to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I will look at process costing. On your screen, I have a question paper for paper 7 by then, that is cost and management accounting. This was before the syllabus change. But of course now it is paper 6. Uh, this question paper, this is March 2022. And it's what I'm going to use. Uh, there is a question about process costing. I was looking at the different questions uh, about process costing. And I realized that uh, this was uh, a good question. Which I can use in this. Uh, revision session now it's about process costing of course uh, this is where you have uh, opening work in progress as well as the closing work in progress at the same time but of course in this particular question you'll find losses in the process of course uh, this makes it a more complicated question because you have both opening work in progress you have closing work in progress at the same time you have losses in the process now process costing uh, this is a method which is applicable where goods or services uh, result from a sequence of continuous or repetitive operations or processes we use it when a company is mass producing the same item but this item goes through a number of different stages of course process costing is an example of continuous operation costing remember there is what we call specific order costing where you'll find job costing, batch costing, uh, service costing, and contract costing. But continuous operation costing, that is where you'll find process costing. So this question is about process costing. Classic distillers limited produces wines for local market cdl's major wine brand is classic wine which goes through three processes to completion so you see production goes through different processes until when we come up with the final product that is in process three CDL uses process costing method to account for costs attributable to class wine throughout the production process. At the beginning of January 2022, CDL had opening work in progress for classic wine of 5,000 liters, valued as below. So the opening work in progress is... 5,000 liters. That is the opening work in progress. 5,000 liters. Valued as below materials. 44 million labor. 14 million 100,000. Production overheads. 10 million 191,000. That is data for your opening work in progress. 5,000 liters. Valued. As below. Now the completion levels of the opening work in progress were as below. That is opening work in progress, but of course we have its completion levels. Materials were a hundred percent, labor sixty percent, production overheads fifty percent. During the month of January twenty twenty two. 40,000 liters of classic wine we are introduced to process 2. So we are in process 2. We are introduced to process 2 at a cost of shillings 12,400 per liter. 
CDL incurred labor costs of shillings 197.8 million and the production overheads were 40 percent of the labor costs to process plus wine in process two that is data for process two these are the inputs in process two that is inputs in terms of the materials in terms of labor and in terms of production over CDL normally provides for loss at 4% of the total input units. However, the output realized from process 2 were 39,000 liters and the scrapped units of normal loss were sold at shearings 5,000 per liter. So in this case, normal loss units can be sold at 5,000 per liter. So uh, there will be scrap value. There will be scrap value. Normal loss, that is the loss that is always expected in the process. It is that loss that you cannot avoid. So in this case, they are telling us that we provide for normal loss at 4% of the total input units. The scrap units were at the following levels of completion. The scrap units, that is uh, the loss units. Okay, that we are sold off. These were the levels of completion. So materials, 100%, labor, 90%, then production overheads, 70%. This is data for the stage of completion of the scrap T units. At the end of the month, CDL had closing work in progress, 4,000 liters. This is closing work in progress, 4,000 liters of class coin at the following levels of completion. Materials, 100% labor, 80%. Production overhead, 60%. Those are the levels of completion for the closing work in progress. Required. Using the weighted average cost method, prepare CDLE statement of equivalent units, statement of cost per unit, statement of closing work in progress, statement of abnormal loss, Huh. Process to account, then explain the term batch costing and how it is applied in organizations like CDL. So, that is the question which we have. Remember, I've told you it has both opening and closing work in progress. At the same time, there are losses in the process. Now, what do you have to do? in such a question question of this kind these questions are very very common when you try to look at the past paper questions questions where you have both opening work in progress closing work in progress where you will be required to use FIFO or weighted average method these questions are very very common but in this case what do you have to do we see there are losses in this particular question. We have losses. So the first step in such a question is always to calculate the amount of normal loss to see whether there is any abnormal loss or gain involved. So normal loss has been provided for at 4% of the total input. So I'm going to start by coming up with the input first. So the inputs, total inputs. Total inputs. To come up with total input, of course, we know uh, we have the opening inventory, what you call the opening work in progress. Our input is in liters. So the opening work in progress in liters, we have 
5,000 liters. That is your opening work in progress. You have 5,000 liters. Of course, we have introduced units or introduced liters. Those liters that we are introduced to process two, those are 40,000 liters. They are 40,000 liters. So when I add the opening whip and the units that we are introduced, we have a total of 45,000 liters. Of course, I'll get our normal loss, which has been provided for at 4% of the total input that gives us 1800 liters that is normal that is normal loss of course uh, there is crop value for this normal loss scrap value we have been told that the these units can be sold just to take you back to the question briefly uh, normally provides for loss at 4% of the total input units. However, the output realized from process 2 are that. And the scrapped units of normal loss we are sold at 5,000 per liter. So, to get uh, the scrap value, I get the 5,000 uh, times the normal loss units, giving us 9 million. giving us 9 millions that is your scrap value that is your scrap value now i need to get the actual output need to get the actual output or i can start with the expected output because we need that expected output how do we arrive at the expected output in this case? Now to get the expected output, I have to get uh, the total input, which is 45,000. I have to minus the normal loss, but then I also have to minus the closing work in progress. Why? Because the closing work in progress has been given as 4,000 units. I have to minus that because if I'm looking at the expected output, I should exclude that and I should also put into I should also put into consideration the normal loss. Then I deduct all that from my total inputs. And that will give us 39,200 liters. These are liters. Your expected output, 39,200 liters. But then, what is the actual output? The actual output has been given as 39,000 liters. That is your actual output. 39,000 liters. That is your actual output. 39,000 liters. In this case, meaning there is what we call what? Actual output is 39,000. Expected output is 39,200. Now, here the expected output is greater than your actual output. So the difference is 200 units. And this represents what we call abnormal loss. Abnormal loss. Why abnormal loss? Because our actual output is less than the expected output. So we have an abnormal loss of 200 liters.
Now one thing which you need to know about the actual output it consists of the opening inventory that is the opening work in progress and then part of the introduced liters that is 40,000 so the 39,000 uh, let me try to break it down uh, let me try to break it down the 39,000 it has opening whip it has opening whip it has opening whip of uh, 5000 liters then it also has the introduced and the completed the units i have to break it down it has the introduced and completed the units as well. It has the introduced and completed units. But then it also has the introduced and completed units of uh, that is 34,000 because 39,000 minus 5,000, you have 34,000. So that is your completed the units or the actual output there is a uh, it has two uh components it has your opening whip as well as the introduced and completed units so once i have these then i think i can now start on the requirements of the questions these are some of the workings which you have to come up with always when it comes to such questions so using the weighted average cost method, prepare the statement of equivalent units. Prepare the statement of equivalent units. Prepare the statement of equivalent units. Okay, let us prepare this. Statement of equivalent units. Statement of equivalent units. I'm going to explain uh, what this statement is and then how we can come up with this statement using uh, the weighted average method. So what I'll do, I need a column for the inputs because there are inputs in this process. I will need one for the output. Then I will need one for the equivalent equivalent units. I'll explain all this. Equivalent units, uh, you have the materials, you have the labor, these are the cost elements which we have in the question. Then you also have uh, the production overheads. Where do I get these cost elements? According to the information given, we know uh, the cost that we are given. You have materials, labor, and production overheads. These are the cost elements which we have in this particular question. So you have to show the equivalent units of all these cost of all these cost elements. So we have to show uh, the units as well as uh, the percentages. For each cost element.
So under the inputs, uh, we normally have to show the, uh, the item or details and then the units as well as uh, when it comes to output we still have to show the item then the unit. Okay, so that is our statement of equivalent <coughs> units. That is our statement of equivalent units. Now, when it comes to the statement of equivalent units, we normally prepare this where we have stocks of work in progress. Okay, so whenever we have stocks of work in progress, then uh, we have to prepare what we call the statement of equivalent units. So it is necessary in order to create homogeneous units of output to convert uh, to convert the work in progress into finished equivalent units of output so we express or we convert these incomplete units to their equivalent of finished units of output basing on the stages of complete basing on the stages of completion course there are two methods which we can use uh, when it comes to allocating the opening work in progress costs to production that is FIFO and then the rotated average method but now let us first see how to uh, come up with uh, the statement of equivalent units before we go into the FIFO and the weighted average method now under the inputs in this question you have your opening whip So we have the opening whip liters, uh, those were 5,000 liters. We have 5,000 liters as our opening work in progress. But then we also have the introduced. Uh, we have the intro. We have those materials that we are introduced, uh, introduced the materials, those that we are introduced uh, in process two, introduced materials. Uh, here we have, there we are 40,000 liters when we look at the question. So we have 40,000 liters. When it comes to the output, the first output we have to look at is the opening whip completed remember in this process too these units uh, were incomplete as at the start so they will be completed during the current pro during the current process so as part of the output we have the opening work in progress that is completed during current period or during the current process and that is uh, 5000 liters that is one of the outputs which we have. But then we also have the introduced and completed. I talked about this uh, previously here. That 
as part of the 39,000 liters that we have completed, there is open work in progress of 5,000. Then they introduce and complete units of 34,000 liters. So here we have 34,000 liters introduced and completed. Still, as part of your output, there will be normal loss because we have a normal loss in this process. Our normal loss is 200 liters. But of course, don't forget, sorry, normal loss is uh, 1,800 liters. Normal loss, 1,800 liters. But then there is an abnormal loss of 200 liters. Then we also have the closing inventory, or what we call the closing work in progress. We have been told that the closing work in progress was 4,000 liters. That's according to the question. I'll add the input plus uh, the opening whip and then uh, the closing work in progress. Then I'll come and also add uh, the outputs. The inputs into the process should always be equal to the outputs in that process as well. If they are not equal, then there is likely to be a mistake, but they should always be equal. Should always be, should always be equal. So that is our input as well as the output in this process. Okay, so that's what we have. Now let us look at the equivalent units. Let us look at the equivalent units. Materials, uh, equivalent units, opening, work in progress. We are using the people method. Sorry, we are using the weighted average method. Now, when it comes to the weighted average method, there is no distinction made between units of opening inventory and the new units introduced to the process during the accounting period. So, in the statement of equivalent units, the opening inventory, the opening work in progress units count as a full equivalent unit of production when the weighted average method is used. In other words, these are, we count them as full equivalent units of production. In other words, we make them to be 100% complete. So opening work in progress completed, the equivalent units in respect of materials, labor, and production overheads, they are going to be at 100%. So this is 5,000. 100%, 5,000, 100%, 5,000, 100%. So the completion levels that we are given in the question for the opening work in progress, these levels under the opening work in progress, they are irrelevant. If I'm using the weighted average method, please take note of that. Introduced and completed. Now, if they are introduced and completed, it means that in terms of equivalent units in respect of materials, labor, and production overheads, this will still be at 100% degree of completion. So they are complete. 34,100%. Normal loss. Now, the equivalent units of normal loss are taken as nil, zero. Therefore, the normal loss is not added in the equivalent production. We normally assume that these losses occurred at an earlier stage in the process. Uh, the closing work in progress has reached all past this stage. 
So normal loss equivalent units are always zero. We don't add them to the equivalent units in respect of materials, labor, and production overheads. So those are zeros. I'll just put zeros. Okay. Then the abnormal loss. When it comes to the abnormal loss, of course, the abnormal loss units are added to equivalent production or equivalent units after considering the degree of completion specified. In the question, uh, we have uh, the scrapped units were at the following levels of completion. Materials, 100%. Labor, at 90%. Then production overheads at 70%. Those are the degrees of completion that you will use when allocating the abnormal loss units. So for materials, we have been told it's 100%. So I will get 100% times uh, the 200. Excuse me. So this is a uh, two hundred times a hundred percent, giving us two hundred units. The percentage is a hundred. Then, uh, when it comes to the labor. Labor that was a uh, ninety percent, so you simply get your ninety percent times uh, the abnormal loss units of two hundred. You get one eighty. This is ninety percent. Comes production overheads. That is, is it seventy percent? Yeah, that is seventy percent. Seventy percent. We times your abnormal loss units of 200, so making it 140. This is 70. Closing work in progress, there are 4,000 units, and we have been told that uh, the closing work in progress of 1,000 liters of plus coin at the following levels of completion 100, 80, and 60. So get the closing work in progress, get the equivalent units. Materials, that is uh, this. Time was a hundred percent. That is four thousand degrees a hundred. When it comes to labor, that is eighty percent. Time was the four thousand liters, making it three two hundred. Degree of completion is eighty percent. Production overheads. 60% degree of completion respect to the closing work in progress, making it to 400 degrees 60 cent. So, those are the equivalent units. We need to get their total. Need to get their total. For the materials, we have 43,200 equivalent units. When it comes to labor, still add up this labor. That is forty two three eighty. It comes to production overheads. The production overheads. That's what we have, 41, 540. Those are your equivalent units in respect of materials, labor, and then the production overheads. So those are your equivalent units. Those are the equivalent units which we have. So that is part A. That is part A of the question.
statement of uh, equivalent units, 5 max. So that is your statement of equivalent units. In case you have questions, please share them uh, in the comment section. I'll answer all those questions. So from there, let us now move to the statement of uh, cost per unit. This is your second statement. Statement of cost per, the statement of cost per unit. Under the statement of cost per unit, we need a column for the cost elements. Cost elements. You need a opening inventory. I'll tell you why. The opening inventory costs. You can just say previous costs. previous costs then uh, current costs of course I have to get a total cost I'm going to tell you why we use the previous and current then I'll get my equivalent units and then The cost per unit, what we call the CPU cost per unit in this case. Total cost equivalent units. Shillings So statement of cost per unit. Now when it comes to the statement of cost per unit, um, both the units, that is both opening and the units that have been introduced. So both the units and the value of opening work in progress are merged with the current period costs and production. To calculate uh, the average cost per unit, or to calculate your cost per unit. Remember, we are using the av we are using the weighted average method, so it considers both opening inventory as well as the current costs into the process. So we combine to come up with the average cost per to come up with the average cost per unit. So we have the materials. There is labor as well as the production as well as the production overheads as well as the production overheads so the previous course you get them from the question materials that was 44 millions look at the question please we have the previous course the course for the opening work in progress up here 44 millions then labor that is 14 100 then for the production over is that is 10 191 so that is your previous costs the current costs have also been given uh, materials that is 496 millions 496 million then labor 197 800 how would you get the 496 millions in fact let me there was uh we are given liters 
we are given liters they were 40,000 liters but each liter was 1200 so you multiply 40,000 liters that was 1200 that's how you come up with the 496 millions then the production overheads in process 2 we are 40 percent of the labor cost to process plus coin in process to 40 percent so this is 40 percent times the labor costs in process 2 which is 70 this is what we have let me format that's what we have then you can get the total costs now when it comes to getting the total cost for materials we have to exclude the scrap value don't forget we have to exclude the scrap value for the normal loss so meaning that i'll get this plus this then minus those material costs should be net of the scrap value minus the scrap value so we get 531 millions labor is this plus then this plus this giving us that we have rent units we get them from the first part materials we have that labor is that then the uh, production over it we have that CPU, that is the average cost per unit. You get the total cost divided by the equivalent units. So I will get this over this. Then uh, this over that. Then this over this. Get that. For the purposes of being accurate. Let me round off to this to be more accurate. Yeah? So you add, then you get your total CPU. That is your total. CPU. That is a statement of the average cost per unit or the statement of cost per the statement of cost per unit while using your weighted average method. Second question a statement of closing work in progress. So they want you to come up with the value of the closing work in progress. So let's come up with that as well. Statement of valuation of closing work in progress. Statement of valuation of closing work in progress. You have to show the cost. elements uh, you have to show uh, the closing whip the units closing work in progress units uh, you have to show your CPU the cost per unit then I think you also have to show the amount the amount in shillings is also in shillings. Of course, uh, you have to be practicing. It's an easy number, easy topic, but uh, question practice is very, very key. Question practice is very key. 
most especially if you have the things of closing work in progress opening work in progress you need to you need to practice really there is need for revision okay cost elements we have the materials there is labor The closing work in progress units, you get them from your statement of equivalent units. That is materials, labor, then the production overheads, the CPUs, you get them from the statement of cost per unit. This simply multiply like this then you add you get your total value of the closing work in progress So that is the value of your closing work in progress. That is what we have. Which is around 70 million three hundred twenty-six thousand six hundred sixty-six point six seven. That is our statement of valuation of closing work in progress. In other words, that is your value of the closing work in progress. Statement of abnormal loss. They also want you to value the abnormal loss units. Statement of valuation of abnormal loss units. course you have the cost elements so it's just a matter of showing the cost elements and they are abnormal loss equivalent units so we have materials labor then uh, production overheads materials abnormal loss Okay, these are the units. The CPU and the amount in units. So units for the abnormal loss, you get them from the statement of equivalent production. This is 200. Uh, this is uh, 200. Uh, the CPU is this. So to get the amount, you just multiply. Just multiply labor the equivalent units abnormal loss labor that is 180 for the production overhead we have 140 the CPUs we have them this you multiply 
then you get the total which is this plus plus that is your total for the value so that is the value of your abnormal loss units that is the value of the abnormal of the abnormal loss units that is the value of the abnormal loss units then uh, the next thing they want you to come up with is the statement is the process to account let us come up with the process to account process to account let us come up with the process to account then we see process to account of course you have uh, the details you will need the units details the units forgetting the amount this should be amount then uh, the details then the units and then uh, the amounts so that is what we have for this process to account so we have to show the details the inputs into the process the inputs there is opening whip we have the opening whip we have uh, the opening whip we have the opening whip which we have to show the opening whip <laughs> excuse me we have uh, the opening whip we have the opening whip We have the opening whip, which is uh, the opening whip is 5,000. Then we have the materials that we are introduced. The materials that we are introduced, you have the 40,000 liters. Don't forget, 40,000 liters. But then there was labor. Uh, labor of course it was given in terms of uh, money and then uh, the production overheads the production overheads uh, opening whip of course you have to get the total of the previous costs what you have to do when it comes to the opening whip you have to get the total cost of uh, the work in progress in respect for the materials labor as well as the production as well as the production overheads so let's try to add up and then see how much we get i think i'll add uh the previous cost there was this plus and then plus yeah that is 68 to uh, 68 million 291 materials uh, their cost was given that is the current so materials use current previous opening work in progress use the total value of the opening work in progress materials you use the current cost of the materials that we are using labor we use the current cost production overheads we use the current cost so that is your debit on the credit uh, there is normal loss you have normal loss of 1800 units but of course i will show its scrap value its scrap value that was uh its scrap value was of 9m i have the abnormal loss the abnormal loss normal loss there are 200 units 
uh, the values up here. Abnormal loss, the value is this statement of valuation of abnormal loss. Then you have uh, you have your closing your closing whip. The closing whip is of how many units? It is a four thousand units, and we have the value from the statement of uh, valuation of closing work in progress, which is that. Uh, then uh, of course we have to come up with a value. We have to come up with a value of completed units. That is a uh, completed completed units completed units uh, to process three to process three account because the output of one process becomes the input of the other process. Don't forget. Those completed units, they were 39,000 liters from the question because we have been told here in the question that uh, 39,000 liters we are transferred, we are realized from process 2, so it will be transferred to process 3 because under process costing, the output of one process becomes the input of the other process. So here we have 39,000 liters, but how are you going to value them? So it is 39,000 liters times the cost per unit total which is this the cost per unit from your statement of cost per unit you multiply the 39,000 liters times your total cost per unit then you come up with your value of the completed come up with your value of the completed units come up with your value of the completed units come up with your value completed the value of completed units then after that is your process costing that is your process account so you have to add and balance it off you have to balance it you have to balance it you have to balance it off balance it off so that is what we have remember the units should be the same the units have to be the same so it is 40 plus 5 giving you that then uh, this plus this plus this then plus that giving you 45,000 units as well so you see the debit of the account is the same as what we have on the credit. So that is your process account, members. That is your process account as per this question. So those were the accounts that we are required. The statement of equivalent production is there. A uh, statement of cost per unit, the statement of closing work in progress, where we have the value of our closing work in progress, as well as the statement of valuation of abnormal loss units, and then the process to account. There was a part that was asking for the term, explaining the term batch costing and how it is applied in organizations like CDL. So we have some two marks there. Course when, when it comes to batch costing, that is a form of a specific order costing uh, that is suitable for those businesses that produces batches of identical units, but each batch of course is for different each batch is for different units. Under process cost under batch costing, each batch of production will have different costs. But each unit within the batch should have the same cost. Don't forget that the cost per unit in the batch is the same. Therefore, if you're to get the total cost of the batch of production, uh, that total cost of the batch of each production has to be calculated. And we have to divide that by the number of units in that batch to find the cost per unit. 
for the batch of production. So you just need to talk about batch costing here and then how it is how it is applied in organization like CDL, then you get your max. So you define batch costing and I've told you it is a form of specific order costing that is suitable for a business that produces batches of identical units, but each batch is for different units. Then each batch of production will have different costs, but each unit within the batch should have the same cost. If you're to get the cost per unit for that batch of production, you get the total cost of the batch divided by the number of units in that batch. So that is process costing and batch costing. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for following Senior Huntington in case you have our questions please feel free to share them in the comment section don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to share and don't forget to recommend my channel to those other friends as long as you assume and believe that this channel will benefit them thank you for watching bye bye